preacher. Amen. 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 Our introduction helps us to be able to see what John is really saying. Because we're not only in a crisis in our communities, not only are we in a crisis in our country, but we're in a crisis within the church. And Paul is talking about counterfeit Christians, perpetrating Christians. He's talking about people that are saying that they want thing, but they're really another. Mm. So as we look at the text for our first outline, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, and as I read, Behold what manner of, of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because the world did not know him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and he shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgress also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know, watch this now, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither knoweth him. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and thank God for our children that's in here. Watch this. You got to be careful who you hang around. All right. That's all right. This Sunday school lesson talks about the ur urgency of John's plea to the church because sin was running rapid in the church. And there was an argument and a dispute. There was an argument and a dispute. The argument was that you can live a life and do what you want to do. And the false teachers was massaging the people to make them believe that it was okay to do what you want to do. All right. Amen. Amen. And John had to combat that because the message of Christ is that we ought to live righteous and we have to live holy. That's, right. That's, right. That's why Peter said, be ye holy as Christ is holy. And if we're pushing the mandate of what Christ has centralized the church to be, we cannot operate like we used to operate. That's right. That's right. Because when we're in Christ, Paul said the other day, we're new creatures. And if there's a newness, there ought to be a transformation. That's why he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. So can I submit to, to us today that when we look at verses 1 through 6, it talks about our place in Christ. It really talks about our place in Christ as children of God. Because everybody coming to church ain't saved. That's right. That's right. That's right. As that old preacher would say, haven't got a witness. Everybody saying, Lord, Lord, is not going to heaven. Everybody preaching ain't going to heaven. Help me somebody. And the problem that we have that John is pressing is that you can't go along with the doctrine that is massaging your flesh and trying to make you feel good in your sin because that is the tactics of the devil. That's right. That's right. How many churches we have that, that, that are allergic to the old time ways? Come on, somebody. They're allergic to it. They want to do what they want to do. They want to run around the church. Don't talk about sin. Don't, don't, don't crucify me for what I'm doing, Reverend. I'm doing everything under the sun. I want to be able to come and be entertained instead of being interdwined with the spirit. And Paul said the other day, he says, present your body as a living sacrifice. What, 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 what about presenting? You got to be what? Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Children of God, can I just say this? 
we have got to get back to the basics. And that's what John is really trying to say. That when we get back to the basics of being children of God, because as, as my brother read, we got so many knockoffs out here. We got so many counterfeits out here. And everybody that's wearing the label, I'm a Christian, if you got to wear it and not live it, you're not a Christian. I'm, I'm just in the book. I'm in the book right here. Because watch this. He says, behold means that it's your stance. It's, it's translated to understand when you see, behold, he's giving you a directive. He's giving you a directive. He's really saying, in this directive I'm giving you, be cautious. It's, it's from the idea of understanding that as you're cautious, remember who's giving you the directive. Because if we look at the title, if it says children of God, and if we're children of God, children ought to know their place. Amen. Children can't get ahead of the parent. The parent has got to be the parent. And the vocation of the parent is to give guidance, to give direction. But you know how it was growing up. You know how we were when we was growing up. We said, as soon as we get grown, we're going to get out on our own. Mom ain't going to force me to go to church. Am I telling the truth? Daddy ain't going to force me to go to church. I'm going to do my own, and I'm not going to force my children. To do what I had to do. How many of y'all come on to tell it? Raise your hand and chain the devil. But we lose focus because, watch this now. The lesson teaches us some key critical points. That as we look at the, the tactics of the devil, John simply says that if we are to be the beloved of Christ, the sons of God, we have got to adhere to what he says and not do what, our, what we want to do. Yes. Amen? Right. Just like going to our young people here. Amen. We have to give direction, right? right? We have to provide stability. And the best way that we provide stability is to be that light. Mm -hmm. That light that inspires them. That's you can't cuss them out at home and then bring the church about this little light of mine. That's, watch this now. Jesus said the other day, he says that my father and I are one. Anything that he says is a reflection of what the father says. Yeah, exactly. And because he is the guiding principle to help us to stay as children of God. That's why children of God that have been taught of the Lord, learned of the Lord, and have received the blessings of the Lord has no problem being in con uh, being in line with God. I remember the old man my father told me years ago, he said, when you leave this house, remember who name you carry. All right. Remember who name you carry. Don't go out there doing any and everything that I wouldn't do. And then as I get ready to open the door, he said, remember, don't shame my name. How many of us sit in the Lord's house as the self-professed children of God, we shame God's name. Yeah, yeah, we shame God's name. So when we look at this, now watch this now. When we turn over to page 50, 60, turn over to 60, watch this. So what do you think? This is where class participation does. I know this is the first time you ever seen me and the first time I've ever seen you. But guess what? We are children of God. What is the, the problem that we find in church that hinders us from really being children of God? Because we may have disagreements. You going all family have disagreements, right? Sometimes you like a person, sometimes you just don't like them because they're actions. But in the spirit realm, as John is conveyed to them in this letter mm -hmm. that it's in the spiritual sense mm -hmm. right. that you cannot allow the corruption of flesh mm -hmm. to lose the fellowship with God. That's right. And that's what we have a lot of times, that we have to be inspired to be better. Mm -hmm. We have to be encouraged to be better. 
And the fact of the matter is that if you follow Jesus, I follow Jesus, she follow Jesus, she follow Jesus, he follow Jesus, if we all follow Jesus, we are already in alignment with the Father. All right, all right. Any questions, comments, reflections so far? So watch this now. What do you think? What is a believer's responsibility in providing the principle that no one who abides in him practices habitual sin? Y'all hear that? I'm on page 60. Because look at this. 1 John 3, 7, 10 says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteous is righteous even as he is righteous. So if someone is righteous, guess what? That's a trailblazer. That's a road map. But it's hard to follow somebody that ain't righteous. You remember that old saying, do as I say do, but not as I do? Come on, we, we must be the same household. We tell kids, you do exactly what I tell you to do. But if the kids are following your example, if they're following what you're doing, children are more prone to follow what you do than what you say. And that's the problem culturally we have in the churches, especially in our denominational faith. We, we say one thing, help me somebody, but we do a whole nother thing. We, 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 we used to talk about the church covenant. Every first Sunday we used to read church covenant. But well, we don't talk about church covenant no more. All right. Huh? All right. Huh? All right. You used to go through the articles of faith. But now we don't even know one article. You talk about article of faith. You talk about where that newspaper at. Yes, oh, yeah. John, this is the same apostle that, that was literally John the Beloved. In his apostleship, he really is reflecting. Watch this now. He's really reflecting in verse 7, 10, the same argument that James had as James was writing his letters. All right. Because all of them had to contend with all these false teachers. People don't want to be rebuked. Amen. That's right. That's right. People do not want to be corrected. That's right. That's right. People want to be massaged. People want to be made to feel good. But the Bible, help me somebody. The Bible says the word will cut you going in and cut you coming out. And it does not matter. Watch this now because there is no residency down here. We all are his children. All right. All right. Any question, comments, reflection? What do you think? What do you think? So the president watches now. He says in verse number eight. Right there, you see verse number eight. Mm -hmm. He that cometh sin. Now watch this now. He that committeth sin is a sinner, right? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all stopped sinning years ago? <laughs> <laughs> How many of you stopped committing sin years ago? I did, but I started back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch this now. Paul said, all have what? Sin. And come short. Now, some of the sins that we the mastered, we, some of us are recovering sinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, mother, we don't practice the same sin that we did last year. We just changed the sin. Huh? Huh? And the committal, watch it now. The committal, really, what John is saying is that he that committed sin is locked into sin. Yes. Yes. That's why righteousness is so important in the church, yes, especially as Baptists. We, we believe in righteousness. Yes. We believe in sanctification. Yes. We believe in holiness. Yes. Amen. We believe in all that. You don't have to go to no sanctified church. This is a sanctified church. All right. All right. Hello, somebody. All right. So as we look at this, now watch this. He goes on to say, he that committed sin is of the who? Yeah. Of the who? Yeah. So if you see your brother overtaking a sin, and you go to them, and the Bible which encourages 
if your brother is overtaken in sin, mm -hmm. ye, watch this now, mm -hmm. ye that are spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everybody can't go talk about, sis, I saw you doing this, and you doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. Oh, wow. Well, huh? yeah. Could it be that the children of God, and watch this, this even bless the children going to school. It's hard for us to see our friends when we admire our friends mm. and our friends are doing something that's going to get us messed up. Mm. All right. Because that's my friend. Yeah, I love my friend. Oh, because we feel, we, we're, we're wrapped in flesh, right? That's right? We're wrapped in flesh. And because we are wrapped in flesh, we believe that we have to have friends. Mm -hmm. We have to have people that are connected to us. We have to have people that will, will validate us, which means that will make me feel important. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, as children of God, the Holy Spirit came to make us yeah. feel empowered. Right. You want to feel empowered, not important. All right. All right. All right. All right. Teach that. Y'all yeah. right. take that to school with you. Yeah. I don't need to be important. I'm already validated. I'm empowered. Teach right. that. But what happens? Y'all, somebody help me. Talk back to me today. Somebody help me. What happens when the church finds themselves want to be more important yes. than empowered? Yes. All right. <laughs> That's the question. Anybody help me? Anybody help me with that? Because most churches want to be important. That's right. Because if you really look at it, the demographic of this area, where you are inside, you probably centralize around at least five or six churches within a mile radius. Amen. Within a mile radius, there's probably five or six churches. Now watch this now. We feel as though we have to have gimmicks to get people to come in the doors. We got to have a pew rally. And we got to allow people to be people. We got to allow anything to happen and go on in the church because we want the masses to come. We want the people to come. We want to have a packed church. So we'll let anything and everything go on. Right. So when anything and everything go on in the doors of the church, then that'll draw people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. We want, we want to draw. Y'all better watch me now. We want to pull them in. And we'll let people do what they want to do. Y'all remember that old song, This Your Thing? Do what you want to do? Uh, come on in. There's no judgment. And when we see you mess up, we're not going to call you out on it. But the problem is we trying to draw people. All right. That's right. We trying to pull people. Mm. For the word says, in thy if I yes, be lifted up. That's how we're in the lifting business. That's right. That's right. Yes. And the only one that can lift him, watch this now. The only one after Calvary, the only one that can lift him is his children. Because the sinner man, he allowed the sinner man to lift him. All right. Amen. All right. But the lifting comes from the children of God. Yes. And the only one that can communicate and have communion with the Lord is who? His children. Yes. Any questions, comments, reflections? Right. Yes, Lord. So the devil. Somebody say the devil. The devil. When last time you talked to the devil? Five minutes ago. Right. <laughs> we told you, no, you just take the day off. It's so pretty out there. Huh? When last time you talked to the devil? My Lord. <laughs> or watch this. When was the last time the devil talked to you? Somebody said, right now. Right now. Because the most, watch this, the devil don't have no problem with you coming to church. The devil will wake you up and tell you it's time to go to church. Amen. The devil don't have no problem with you paying tithes. The devil don't have no, no problem with you coming, greeting, and kissing on folk. Hugging on folk, he don't have no problem with that. He wants his place among the children so he may decipher who he made to devour. That's, right. That's why Jesus said the other day, the thief cometh but to what? Lie, yeah. steal, yeah. kill, and what? That's his agenda. And watch this now. If we know that's his agenda, then why are we as children of God always falling for the trap? That's a question. Somebody help me. When I was in, in school, seminary, we had to write, what is the sin that separates you so easy? Mm. 
Mm. And one of my uh, fellow fellow persons that was in class said said myself because <laughs> right. I want to feel important. I want to I want to preach like everybody else. Mm -hmm. We cannot be everybody else. That's right. That's right. We can only be who God has called us to be. That's right. Because if we look in the book, amen, look at verse number nine. Look at verse number nine. Somebody read verse number nine for me quickly. Whosoever. Whosoever is born of God uh -huh. does not commit sin. Uh -huh. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Whosoever is born of God, what? Does not commit sin. Mm -hmm. Now watch this now. We know that everybody sins, but watch this. Because of the appropriation of God, mm -hmm. the purchase of God through his son, uh -huh. we have been redeemed yes. from sin. Uh -huh. And because we've been redeemed from sin, watch this now, we have to understand we have an avenue where we can repent to God. That's right. Someone that has not accepted him cannot repent mm -hmm. until they confess That's right. the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. So as children of God, guess what? We have insurance. Somebody say uh, insurance. insurance. That's really what that text says. We have insurance because guess what? None of us are, are employed by the devil. That's right. That's right. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you. <laughs> Amen. We're not employed by the, the devil because we don't keep up havoc. We don't keep up confusion. We don't keep up mess. We don't have those issues here. That's somewhere else down the road. Amen. Amen. But I know some of y'all cousins. I pastor some of y'all cousins. I know how some of y'all cousins are. Y'all throw rocks and hide your hand. Come on, talk back to me, somebody. And the children of God that his essence is not locked into what the devil is doing. Because the devil wants to cause havoc. Verse 10 says, in this, the children of God are manifested. And the children of the devil, watch it now. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Righteousness simply means rightly standing before God. You do know righteousness does not mean perfection. That's right. That's right. And I think we mix up righteousness and perfection. Mm -hmm. And especially in our denominational uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Because righteousness, without righteousness, no man see God. All right. Righteousness is my position. Mm -hmm. Amen. Perfection, I'll be made perfect on the other side. Yeah. That's, That's right. not on this side. So as children of God, we're going through the process. Mm -hmm. That means that we got to grow up. Mm -hmm. That means we, on the order, on the order, watch this down. The only way you can really grow up is for mom and daddy to teach you what they can teach you until time for you to get out on your own. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. 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 Now we heard him say, when you out on your own, you on your own. Mm -hmm. We heard him say those things. Yeah. But you really didn't grow up until you had to what? Struggle. Mm -hmm. Had to pay them bills. Am I talking right? When you start paying them bills, and to this day, I don't know one grown folk person that likes to pay them all bills. Amen. Because when you was in mama's house, in daddy's house, you had the covering, right? You had the protection. You didn't have to have those responsibilities. Your responsibility was to do what mama and daddy told you to do. Case in point, flip the script. Even in the church, we may be grown, maybe on our own out there, but there's a hierarchy that is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And because we're his children, no matter how grown we get, we'll never be grown to him. Amen. Amen. And I can appreciate this lesson because I know the guy that wrote the lesson a couple months ago. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I said, I, Eric Williams of, of the Sunday School Publishing Board, when he was writing the lesson, he said, Reverend, the problem that we have in the local churches is that a lot of people in the local churches don't understand that God loves and desires to cover his children. That's right. It's not that he wants to baby us. 
He wants to protect us That's right. because the enemy hates us yes. because the enemy hated him. That's yes. right. That's right. So as we look at it, now look at verse 10 again. Look at it. Verse 10 tells us, go on. In this, the children of God are manifested in the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Lord. Now watch this. Because as I look in, 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 in the, what to do in the next context, we're gauged as far as our relationship with God, not how we pray to him, but how we treat our brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 Yeah, ye shall know that ye are my disciples because you have love for your brethren. Amen. How are you going to love God in whom you've never seen? Yes. And hate your brother whom you see daily? Yes. Huh? The problem is that we are living a lie. We are perpetrating a fraud and we try to make ourselves look more legitimate as Christians. But we're not operating in the crystalness of Christ, All right. but we're operating in the crisis of this world. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Every breath we breathe, we ought to be showing love. Yes. Now watch this. Now don't love me the way you love 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 yourself, because some people don't know how to love themselves. All right. All right. All right. Love me what the book tells you. Yes. If you stick with the book. If you stick with the book, you can't go wrong. All right. Any questions, comments, reflections? I know somebody got to have something. <laughs> hey Amen. I know you're looking at me. I, but come on, this class. Because watch this. As soon as you leave out of here, you got some family drama. You got some work drama. You got some health drama. You got some stuff that's in your life. And you wonder, how am I going to make it? But as long as I stick to what the book says, right. that if I'm a child of God, I practice righteousness. Yes. 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 Write this down. Position. Yes. Write this down. It's important. Position. Mm -hmm. Now watch this now. John is taking time, critical time, because he's being beaten by false teachers. And these false teachers are constantly, they're there. John's not there. John has to send a letter. Amen. And because of his apostleship, which means his position, John has to encourage. When was the last time you got encouraged coming through the doors? Now, asking somebody how you're doing, that's, that's good, but that's not encouraging. That's right. All right. All right. Amen. Because right. in the local church, we were not taught how to be an encouragement to somebody. Mm -hmm. The best encouragement is to let your light so shine yes. that yes. men, women, may see his marvelous works right. and may glorify the Father, which is where? Yes. In heaven. Right. Amen. Any questions, comments, reflections? So my position is that I have to be righteous. Secondly, my position is that I have to show love. Mm -hmm. Write that down. We have, I have to show love because the Father has shown love. That's right. Amen. Yes, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son. Watch this now. That whosoever what? Believeth in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. How much more time I got, sister? Amen. Somebody Two keep me straight. Two minutes. All right. Watch this now. As, as we're closing. So the position of love and then lastly, the position of his word. His word. Because the directives had to come from John. John was responsible to keeping them on track. And ladies and gentlemen, if everything is making you feel good, you better check that thing out again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why you got to learn how to work together. You got to learn how to worship together. But you got to learn how to love together. Amen. Any last questions, comments, reflections? Time really got out of here. Any last questions, comments, reflections? You got about three more minutes, brother. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, we talked about counterfeits. 
Uh, what are some ways to easily identify counterfeits? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Easy way to identify is you come speak to me, then next you know, right behind my back, you talking about, man, ain't nothing to him. <laughs> ain't nothing to him. Hey, man, how you doing? Rev, how you feeling today? Yes, sir. I don't want to interrupt you. No, you go ahead. When you was asked about counterfeit, the Treasury Department, they can have men that they uh, train. They have uh, those who they train uh, to identify that which is false, yeah. false bills, counterfeit. And the way they train them is not to look at the counterfeit bills, it's to look at the real bills. Mm -hmm. And once you know what's real, you, get, you don't have you no problem you. identifying. Yeah, you yeah. identify your own. That's it. Yeah. How many of you ever went somewhere and you went to a store and you gave a person a, a bill and they... There's a secret marking in the bill, right? Come on, somebody. There's a secret marking on the bill that lets you know if it's real. We all got the secret marking on us called the Holy Ghost. And what comes from the heart... Reaches the heart. I'm gonna stop right here. Amen. Come on, sister. Okay. Oh, question to me. Um, what I got from, and I like how you opened up that. Um, and as, as children of God, we must mature. Yes. We have to grow That's up. Right. That's right. And so in that growing up, there's a change in behavior, That's right. That's conduct, That's right. communication, fellowship. You know, right. when I was a child, I think I spake, I act like a child. That's when I became a man or growing up, yeah. I put away those. And that's one of the points that I really got out of this lesson. I mm -hmm. like how you opened it up. That, mm -hmm. You know, hey. we have to grow up. Mm -hmm. You know, we come into church, we nicely suited, but sometimes our behavior and reflected yeah. growing up, for sure, right? I and then that counter some of your own sisters, right? And I'm guilty of that. I dare not say that. I've said it towards them, with them before, like, the Lord has chastened me where he says, Tony, you can't behave like that anymore. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Check me on that. My yeah. Lord. And so I like that. And so as he was reaching with our young people, as they grow up, there's a change of behavior. Yes. You know, we were yes. the DBS, and I had the upper class, and I thanked them for acting like upper class. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I thank you for right. that. That helps yes. me. Yes. Did y'all hear sister? What the sister said? Our behavior has got to change. Things we used to do, we ought not be doing no more. Yes, sir. Uh, I like when you mentioned about when church come proud and the end, everything go on better by the people. Mm -hmm. But one thing about God hates a proud look. Yes, that's right. Yes, he hates a proud look. It, now, all of us take pride in how we look, don't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to make sure that suit looking good? All right. You want to make sure that dress looking good? Amen. If nothing, you're going to make sure you put your your clothes in the cleaner. But watch this now. He's talking about a haughty spirit. That haughty, powerful spirit. You, We are nothing. We're nothing but dressed up dirt. Come on, somebody. We're nothing but filthy rags in his presence. And we have got to remember as long as we're children of God, then he will cover us. And remember I told you that we have the insurance of his coverings? Mm -hmm. Then we lastly have his assurance That's right. that as long as we stay in our place, right. grow up spiritually mature. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can grow in maturity is through the word of God. Right. Through the word of God. Because without the word of God, we are nothing. Remember David, come on, I'm sister, I'm waiting for you to come on. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Sin is what separates us from the master. Amen. Come on, sister. Amen. Amen, amen. Uh, when we stand, we open doors of the church. Come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. 
to sing a stand up song. I have decided to follow. Christian Ed Sunday School opened at 10 a.m. by the assistant superintendent. After singing Sweet Spirit, devotion reading was 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21, read by Tawanda Peters. Prayer was off by Deacon McCoy. The lesson for today, Children of God. All classes were combined, taught by Rev. Williams. Total present, 48. Total offering for today was $168. The school is uh. closed with our remarks by assistant superintendent. The school's closed with the Lord's Prayer. Sister Lulu is, is our superintendent, Tawanda Peters' secretary, right by Tawanda Peters. Amen. Thank you, Tawanda, for our minutes. Um, welcome all visitors.